Hey guys, Constance here. Welcome back to A Good Life Farm. So, I am here in the homestead kitchen working on some peppers. We have still got peppers coming into, coming in in the garden. Uh, we've already had our first frost, but I've still got uh, pepper plants that are still doing great. Um, and uh, so we've got some peppers to take care of and process. Now, I did a video, I've mentioned a few times recently about my wood cutting boards, but I do have a couple of simple little plastic ones. This one's kind of stained, I need to set it out. Oh, when you have these white plastic um, cutting boards and they get stained like that from things that you cut, if you leave them out in the sun, they generally go away, the stains. Uh, I just haven't put this one out in the sun recently. But I do use little ones like this when I am cutting up hot peppers, which I am going to be doing today, thus the gloves. So I have got a whole bunch, whole bunch here of cayenne peppers. These are, oh, what are these called? Something long cayennes. I'll put the name of them down underneath wonderful, very productive plants. Um, all of these, I mean, this is just one harvest, but, and I've done multiple, multiple harvests, and these are all off of one plant. Uh, great growers. Um, I've got a whole bunch of these little lilac bell peppers, which I've mentioned before. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to grow these again. Uh, there was one when I was talking about them previously that I had held up in that video that was actually kind of decent size. It's the only one I've had that big. Most of them end up being really small and puny. I just don't feel that they are productive enough to you take up the space in my garden. So I've got a few bell peppers. Um, I've got one lipstick pepper. And I've got a bunch of paprika. Got a whole bunch of jalapenos and Brazilian starfish peppers. And the hot peppers I am going to be dehydrating. Um, I use them to make my own seasonings. Uh, the paprika peppers, of course, are for paprika. And the cayenne peppers, of course, go without saying. They're cayenne pepper. Once they're dry, you could pulse these into a powder for your regular cayenne pepper. Um, if you pulse them until they're kind of coarse, then that's your red pepper flakes. So I'm going to get started dehydrating these. Now this one here is a little bit green, so I'm debating whether I want to uh, use this one or not. But basically all the rest of them, I'm just going to cut the top off. Set that aside, and then I'm going to split the pepper down the middle. I'm going to kind of take that thick white pulp out. as much as I can. So now you can take these and you can kind of tap some of the seeds out if you want or you can leave them in for added heat and I'm just going to arrange these in my dehydrator. I'm 
and I actually need to get a bowl to put this stuff in. Now we actually own two dehydrators. This one here is a, a pretty inexpensive Nesco dehydrator that we have had. Oh gosh, we've had. I know we've had it over 20 years. Um, and then I have another one that is a Presto brand one that's a little bit nicer, has more controls. This one has no heat controls. It's just on and off. That that's it. And we have used this for all sorts of things, but nowadays it's almost exclusively become my pepper dehydrator. Now those long cayenne peppers are really easy to split open and everything to dry. These little Brazilian starfish peppers are a little bit more of a challenge. So for these, what I have been doing is just taking the pepper, cutting the top of it off like that. Take out the, the middle, like that, with most of the seeds. And I'm just putting the bottom in my dehydrator, and then the top piece here, again, pulling out some of the seeds out of the middle. And then I'm just taking my knife and cutting the top into a few pieces. Because again, this is gonna get dehydrated, so doesn't really matter as long as you get that stem piece out so that you can so you can dry these and into the dehydrator. So I get a lot of questions about these Brazilian starfish peppers in regards to are they hot, are they mild, what are they? And they can actually vary a little bit by their heat. Um, but on average, they, they tend to be about like a cayenne pepper in their um, levels. Check out this pepper. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? I cut it open and there was a smiley face inside. <laughs> all right, so I have all of my hot peppers in the dehydrator and now I've been working on my, my bell peppers. Uh, the bell peppers, the lipstick pepper, and the lilac bell peppers. Now, typical bell peppers are really easy to slice up because they have these flat sides on them, and I've shown how to do those in other videos, but these kind of, um, well, upside down tear-shaped ones, these pointed ones, are a little more challenging. So I'm going to show you how I cut these ones up. So these pointy ones, and I know it's really hard to see because this pepper is so dark, I'm going to cut it completely in half from stem to tip. Then, when I open it up, and these might be a little bit surprising, purple on the outside, green on the inside. So now I'm going to take one half, and I'm just going to kind of reach in there, grab that pith and the, the base with all of the uh, seeds on it, and just rip it out. Hopefully you can... Mm, break my bowl over here. Just like that. Get 
some more of that pith out. Just like that. That's how I gut these. Grab pith and rip it out. Just like that. All right. Then I just cut the peppers into strips. and cut them across. Alright, so all of my bell peppers, the lilac, the regular green bell peppers, and the lipstick pepper have all been diced up and put on a tray to freeze. And then I went ahead and I diced up my jalapeno peppers and put those on a tray to freeze. And once they're all frozen, I'll just put those into containers. I have Brazilian starfish pepper seeds here. And this is just when I was pulling out that pith from the middle. I just leave that on there. This is all going to dry and then just kind of rub it between your fingers and all the seeds will come right off of it. And so once that once that's dry, I'll have those seeds that I can save. Uh, these right here are some of the winged beans. I took some of the dried pods and opened them up to save some of the seeds. And some of them felt like they had a little bit of moisture in there. So I'm just going to leave them here on this uh, paper plate and paper towel until I know they're good and dry. And then all of my hot peppers, my paprika, the cayenne, and the Brazilian starfish peppers, I've got those all in my dehydrator. And uh, in case I didn't mention it earlier, the reason I use my older dehydrator to do these is because this dehydrator is going to go outside. Don't ever make the mistake of putting hot peppers in a dehydrator and turning it on in your house. I did that once a long time ago and uh, it only takes once to learn that lesson because unless you like the idea of being pepper sprayed you don't want to do it in your house it's going to blow that capsaicin oil into the air and it's just going to be um, awful so i'm fixing to uh, hook that all up and take it outside and uh, let it run until all the peppers are dry All right, and then one last thing I wanted to show you. This year, one of my experiments that I did, every year I grow something unusual and new. Uh, this year was actually two things. It was the winged beans and it was these. Uh, these are Chinese python beans. And they are, I mean, they actually look like snakes out there in the garden. They're pretty wild. So all of these are so all of these are entirely too big to eat. Although this one's kind of close. You could you can maybe do this one. But as you can see, when they come across any sort of um, resistance, they start curling around everything they touch and they just keep on growing. Isn't this crazy? So 
yeah, Chinese python beans. I did go ahead and save some of the seeds out of these to just kind of hang on to. So if I decide to grow them again in the future, uh, they're going to need plenty of space, just like loofah gourds do. But I'll have some seeds to do them with. All right, so that is it for today. Brought you into the kitchen while I was doing up some peppers. There aren't very many things left to do in the garden. I did actually, I don't think, I don't know if I mentioned it, I did harvest the sweet potatoes um, about a week or so ago. And so those are curing in the spare bedroom. So the last of the garden is finishing up. So thanks for hanging out with me here again in the homestead kitchen. My name is Constance at A Good Life Farm, and I'll talk to you all next time. Bye.